What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome to a Finance Friday with the Wave Makers. I'm super excited about our guest tonight, one of my best friends, um, a guy who I absolutely respect and absolutely admire in regards to what he's been able to do with his life in a very short amount of time. Uh, you know the drill for Fridays. We, you know, I ask three questions, Nick asks three questions. If you got something for our, our speaker, drop it in the chat and we'll try to get to it. Uh, but with that being said, Mr. Jack Burke, are you with us tonight, brother? Go ahead and um, unmute yourself, Jackie Moon. I'm here. You hear me? Yep. You're all good. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show, Jack Burke, the hot seat. Um, you know, to get things oh. started, man, uh, you know, I know that the 15 people on the call really want to know a little bit more about you. Um, if you want to take two to three minutes and maybe just tell us the, the bullet points about your life and where you're at and some of the projects that you're working on now. Uh, I'd love to, uh, uh, you know, firstly, Mike and Nick, thanks for the, uh, uh, acknowledgement and having me on. Um, I, I went to college with uh, Batanti. We played some lacrosse together. Uh, uh, he uh, he came in as a transfer, and, and we uh, had our moment uh, about 2011, and we've been very good buddies since. So I've uh, been so thankful to have you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, um, and him and I are so much alike. We're, we're both one of six. Uh, I've got two brothers, three sisters, a uh, huge Irish Catholic family. My mom's one of 12. So we always just, we grew up, uh, same, same kind of thing, huge family. Um, I moved around a lot as a kid. So my family really was my, my friends. We, I, I think I went to like 10 or 12 different schools, uh, before I got to college. Um, so I've always just had this deep background in, in the foundation, uh, and you know family over everything and and that's i think where mike and i really struck a chord um but my story you know very long very short uh i graduated college in 2013 i was an accountant for about a year and the desk life was not for me the money was great uh and and it was 10 hours behind a screen every day and you know some people are called to that thing i'm a very active guy i i, I couldn't do it so after that uh I went and became a teacher. I was in special ed. Uh, my, my little brother, number six of six, has very severe special needs, cerebral palsy, uh, in a wheelchair, tube fed, that, that whole song and dance. Um, so I've, I, that's how we grew up. I've always been called to, to helping people that need a little help. Uh, again, another uh, virtue in Mike that I've always uh, really admired. Um, and I did that for about three years and I loved it, but I didn't see it being my end game. And, and now I, I've taken that passion for helping people and a very hands-on approach. Uh, and I've turned it into personal training. I work with uh, a lot of people right after they get out of physical therapy. I'm a corrective exercise specialist. So hip replacements, knee replacements, uh, all, all the way to people with special needs that just do need a lot of extra care. So, uh, the journey's been, I'm 29, just a couple weeks ago, and I didn't think I would have three jobs by now, but, you know, I've been self-employed for a few years, and it's, it's the best. Uh, it's weird, and it's tough, and it's uh, challenging, but uh, like Nick and Mike have, have shown you guys so well, it really is uh, just very rewarding. So I wouldn't change a thing. It, 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 it didn't uh, pan out the way I saw it, but uh, I love where I'm at. I love that. I love that. Super powerful. Um, you know, just humble roots. You know, I'm sure that everyone can agree. Just the tonality in your voice. You know, you're you're you appreciate where you came from, and you're excited for what's ahead, which is no which is all we can do in our journey. Uh, so I go three. Nick goes three. I'm gonna start it off. You're gonna get a little bit of yin yang, and feel free to share your heart. We're gonna try to keep the answers around five minutes, something like that. Um, and then we'll open up the lines at the end for anybody on the call who might want to ask you a personal question. Um, I'm going to start us off, man. If you uh, were to, if you were to look back at your journey and identify one major key that you should have been developing all along, 
and you should have been paying attention to way more, way earlier, what would that principle be? What would that, uh, that habit be that you would develop much earlier knowing what you know now? Uh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I'd say, uh, take, take a real deep look at how I analyze myself. And in terms of a micro versus macro thing, I, I think I, I, I should have been, you know, I, I've, I've made my decisions how I needed to make them and I made my changes and I've loved my process, but there's been a lot of, uh, doubt a lot of analysis a lot of uh ne negativity through the process as, as everyone knows um but i i was so concerned about you know making it in my 20s and and as everyone knows that that that's really not how it works you learn in your 20s and and you know, you're earning in your 30s or your 40s or whatever it is so i love where i'm at i'm you know i'm doing well and i wouldn't change a thing about it minus sometimes where my head was uh and just really learning to enjoy the process, right? Three different careers, not jobs. Those are careers. I was finance, education, you know, personal training. It, it, it's, it's been a whirlwind. But looking back, like I'm still in my 20s. That's what it's about. You just got to figure it out. So I wish I would have been a little easier on myself in terms of my headspace. That's beautiful, uh, Jack. You know, I, everything that you're saying, man, is ringing a bell in my head as well. I was actually mentioning last night the power of taking a day to have an assessment, like that, that self-assessment day at least once a week to really know where we're at. And it sounds to me like that's the similar uh, uh, topic that we're speaking about there. That's beautiful, man. Thank you for joining us, Jack. So I want to I wanna go a little bit deeper on what you just said, actually, because you, you, know, you mentioned about the doubts, right? The, the uncertainties and the fears and maybe even self-limiting beliefs. Um, but you also mentioned finding peace where you're at, right? Being at peace and, and enjoy where you're at. How do you, how do you reach that middle point for someone that's an overachiever, someone that has huge goals in life, someone that has huge aspirations, they know where they're going, they know what they want in life and, and they're focused every single day on that. And they know that it takes a obsessiveness towards that goal, but at the same time being at peace, and being happy with where you're at right now how do you not get content or too anxious about the yeah it's it's uh yeah i it's a hard uh line to find it's but it's just faith and then you know I don't, and not to go down that you know whole faith road but everyone uh everyone knows there's there's something greater and when those times get tough and and in the moment to take myself back out of the situation again, the micro versus macro, and just remember all I have. I, I've been so blessed. My, I the opportunities that my you know my parents have given me and, and my siblings is is next level. Uh, and I have to remind myself that on a daily basis that my worst days are are, and all of our worst days, if we're lucky to be on this phone call right now, are are better than anyone can imagine in, in some parts of the world. Uh, some people have never seen how great our worst days are. So it's, it's just a thought you kind of have to wrap your head around. And yeah, it sounds get tough and stressful, but you rally and uh, you're, you're, again, take yourself two steps back and just remember it's a whole process. Wow. He said how great some people could never imagine how great our worst days are. That is unbelievable. Um, I appreciate you, man. There's so much knowledge. Yo, drop some ones and twos and threes in the chat if you're feeling our boy, uh, Jack Burke. We got a, we got a question in the crowd, and it, and it coincides with kind of where I was going. Uh, Miss Libby Cherry wants to know, what are the entrepreneurial habits that you have cultivated to keep you focused and productive in your day-to-day? -day? And I want to preface, I watch this kid, and there are very few people in my network. And I, for the past five years, I've been very meticulous about who I watch on social media and making sure that they are people that inspire me. Uh, this kid gets up before everyone and works longer than everyone. 
and uh, he does it with a positive attitude and just he's always – He's always fired up. I wish we could get some Kangen water to compliment the Starbucks that my man consumes. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, what are, what are those habits that you've instilled to be as productive as you are on a daily basis and that day-to-day -day schedule? What, what are some of the tricks that you've put into your day to create the longevity and the work ethic that you have? Coffee. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, it's the position I put myself in. It, it kind of makes me do that stuff naturally. I've, because everyone I work with is such a unique case. It's, it's, you know, very anatomy based. It's, Hey, one muscle on this side isn't really firing. And we've got to talk to this side about how to loosen up a little bit. So my, my, the, the clientele I've put myself around, they, their problems make me constantly learn. So I'm constantly having to Google something or, or go back to that anatomy textbook or, or I, my therapy these days, I've got a coloring book and it's anatomy. I, I'm just coloring different muscles of the body. Um, so I, I enjoy it. And, and that's if, if I were to instill a single point, find something you like to do. I, I, I was in the physical therapy idea for a bit. It wasn't really for me. I did a couple of different jobs, but then I found this corrective exercise and I found these connections that I have and I really just enjoy what I do. I don't like getting up at 3.45 in the morning sometimes for a 5 a.m. class. I don't like, you know, shutting down the gym at 9.30, 10 p.m. Uh, but, but I love what I do. I love leaving what I do or, or going to what I do knowing that I'm about to make a real difference in something, not, not just their day, their life. I'm going to teach them something. I'm about to, you know, catch a man of fish he eats for a day. You teach a man of fish he eats for a life. I, I, you know, you really teach people stuff and it's, it, it, it motivates me. Uh, just knowing that, that people are counting on me to educate them and, you know, correct them and, and, and uh, get them into some good habits. So I just, I just enjoy it. Jack, that's beautiful, man. I love that you have that bigger purpose behind what you're doing. You know, there's a bigger driving force. And that's something that I, I would, I agree with you that that's common in every successful person, right? They're, they enjoy what they do. They genuinely see purpose and fulfillment in what they're doing. So it literally feels like they're not working many times, yeah. right? Although it's not, every little thing is not always enjoyable. The bait, the reason behind it drives them. So I want to, you know, I had some questions kind of prepared before, but I want to go deeper into something that you said as well. You, so you mentioned that you, there, you don't always enjoy getting up at 3.45 in the morning, 4 o'clock, right? So let's talk a little bit about that mindset as to what still gets you up. Because and I, I would love to hear your perspective on this. But from a personal standpoint, um, there are days and weeks that I go – streak and I'm crushing I'm on top of it and then if I allow my mind it, it literally it's within that first three seconds of what I think about the moment that that alarm clock goes off right so can you talk to us a little bit about that what is it that gets you up even though your body's like dude stay in bed oh yeah oh and and they're they're especially in the winter months when that blanket feels about a thousand pounds and I'm just so comfy uh, you know, girlfriend is pregnant. She's snoring right next to me. I don't want to go anywhere. Uh, but it's what you just said. It's, it's the first three seconds or, or some people say six seconds. We get to choose our attitude, right? That alarm goes off. I knew it was going to go off the night before. I knew it was going to go off. I can wake up at 345 and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. Or, or I can put my feet on the ground as soon as possible, get excited about that cup of coffee, and know that there's about 45 people at an Orange Theory class that are counting on me to set the pace for their day. So I don't, I don't get to be tired because they're counting on me. I love that. So that's that's what I chose to do. That's what that's what I'm doing. I don't, I don't get to be tired. I'm, I'm rallying, and I'm Standard. the most annoying dude at five o'clock in the morning because I'm Standard, so rally. Man. That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Mikey, go ahead. I love it. Oh um, man. My man, Jackie Burke, gets me fired up just listening Hello. to listening to how how you uh, communicate, right? And just the mindset that that what you just said is 
you knew that the alarm was going to go off the night before. So what are you so mad about? You know? And then I think that the gem in it all was get your feet on the ground as fast as possible. Right. Uh, Mel Robbins. Be positive yeah. right away. Yeah. If you haven't read for, for the 14 people on the call, if you haven't read Mel Robbins, the five second rule, I highly yeah. recommend that you go get that book. Um, you know, she tells you that you have five seconds from doing, from getting the feeling that I need to do something and actually taking that first step toward doing it. You have five seconds before your doubts and your fears and your limiting abilities and all of the demons that we fight on a daily basis start picking you apart, right? You ever see that person on the end of a diving board and it's like, uh, uh, and then like we're at that three minute mark and I just stop watching. I'm like, Sharon ain't jumping. If Sharon yeah. was going to jump, she would have jumped, you know, 30, right 30 seconds in. So um, it, it's super important, but Jack, man, you know, full transparency um, on a spiritual level, you are one of the deepest people in my circle, right? You just, your philosophies on life, the way that you look at things, the things that you've overcome, the things that you're experiencing now, and to still think the way that you think and then be able to have the gift of communicating your thoughts the way that you do. Um, I'd like to get a little bit deep with you, man. Um, what is your biggest fear, Jack Burke, in life? Uh, you know, everyone goes with, you know, not reaching their full potential, but, uh, and that is a legitimate fear. Uh, I think, I think that's situational. Uh, you know, depending on where you are and what you got going, I think that fear changes right now. You know, Mike, you know, no one else knows my, my father's been fighting stage four cancer for this Memorial Day weekend will be four years. Uh, and they gave him about two to three months, four years ago. So, you know, knowing that that's a reality, knowing that he's in chemo every week, uh, right now, that's my biggest fear, you know, losing my father. Uh, and, you know, with a son on the way, and, and how do I instill these, these thoughts and principles that my dad taught me? Because uh, I, I, you know, I have my rough edges, but I like how I turned out. Uh, but I think it changes, and I think it's, I think it's, imperative for people to address those fears and know that they change and know that there's no success without fear there's no success in terms of spiritually or or professionally whatever it is you have to be whatever it takes for you but you got to find peace with the fear uh and and not conquer it but live with it in, in a positive manner. Again, it's just about choosing your attitude. So right now that's my biggest fear, but it changes often. Man, that is so powerful. I love that you said have peace with the fear. It is got something you. that's not, I don't think enough people talk about it. It's such I got a hard, you. right. It's a, it's a hard concept to, to, to get, to get around to and really understand like how, what do you mean? How do I have peace with the fear? The fear is overtaking me, but it really, it's about overcoming our own emotions. Really? Yeah. Right. Um, Got to dance with it. Dance with it. I love it. Um, so we have a question from Dennis here. He asked, what are the biggest traits that have made an impact in all of your careers? What are the biggest, what, excuse me? The biggest traits. That have traits. an impact, correct? Uh, it's funny. From each venture, it's been such a different thing. Uh, you know, with with when I was in the accounting thing, it was that that discipline of getting up early because I had to get my work out in before I went and sat behind a computer for like twelve hours, and that was just miserable. But that's when I really learned, you know, before playing lacrosse at the Tati College, how, how, I, how I got up early and, and same thing, get your feet on the floor, start your day, even if it's going to be a slow day behind the monitor. Um, but then I, when I went to special education, I worked with, uh, I had my own classroom of four boys that were all four were violent towards others or and or themselves. So when it was that, I was like, okay, I've got to get my head, not my body, I've got to get my head in the right space for the next eight to nine hours. So it was getting up and it was, again, feet on the floor, but it was meditation and it was 
uh, positive thinking to start my day because I knew it was going to be a really stressful day and I was probably going to have to call an ambulance. Uh, and now with training, it's just patience. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, because every day is so different. Some, every day I get up at 3.45 or 4 a.m., but I know that when those feet hit the floor that day, it's not going to look like the day before because I'm an entrepreneur. It's, I have to be okay with, you know, riding the wave and okay with one morning's a busy morning. And then the next morning it's a, it's an easy morning, but then you got to rally in the afternoon. So uh, again, just resetting those intentions, having a, a good mindset, again, the micro versus the macro and just remembering that I love what I do and no day is going to look the same, but I'm helping people and I'm, and I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Love that. That's really good. Hope that answered, Dennis. I love it. I love it. Um, Nikki T, you got one more for him? I know you just you just went with Dennis. Yeah, I mean, what I what I had also in mind that I wanted to talk about was let's talk a little bit about self limiting beliefs because uh, from my experience, Jack. Um, looking at my own life and the life of other people i've noticed that usually that next level in our lives physically mentally spiritually is is blocked by a certain belief that we have about ourselves right um my question to you is what do you think is the biggest self-limiting belief that holds people back from accomplishing the things that they really want in life and that makes them settle for less, either from your own life experience or the experience of other people around you? What is the biggest self-limiting belief that keeps them from achieving their next level in life? Uh, it, it, I, I think it has to be self-doubt. I think it, it has to be, I mean, you think about it, you are you think about the people that are at that tier they're not racists they just put the word they the the content out if it's online or or, or they just kept showing up if it was in person whatever it is they, they kept learning and kept practicing and it's that's all it is you you if if again if you're lucky to be on this phone call we're, we're lucky enough to, to choose our own destiny. We're, we, we, we limit ourselves with the excuses. Just start something. It's not going to be great, but just keep going. And, and people, if it's online, if it's Instagram, I, I've done so many different you know, fitness Instagram things, and I just keep doing it because I don't care what people think about me. I, I, I'm not going for the likes. I'm just putting content out there that I hope people you know, like, like to see because that's what I, just, I like doing. Uh, so it's... it's self-doubt it's it's you got to put the the blinders on and just not give a single damn about what anyone else is saying or thinking about you if you love it just do it i love that i love that and just that that concept i mean it took me a while to even wake up to it like me and nick have been at wave makers for four yeah. five years now and like people who don't, people who don't know us are like think that it's this multi-million like like huge operation like where's the corporate office and we're me and nick are loud like what you mean bro like we're yeah, we're still we're out. still waiting for our big break we're still but we're constantly at it we're constantly at it and i see it so many times of the actual growth scale of businesses it happens in such a condensed amount of time but the time frame from when the company started, the development of the people who are behind it, the ups and the downs, the, the, tr the trials and tribulations, all of that takes about eight to nine years for the yeah. average entrepreneur. And then the boom, it's like two to three years. Yeah. And you're like, wow, like now we're rolling. So I just think that's so important, Jack, just that consistency. Like whatever it is that you're trying to do, just start right? The term yeah. is you don't have to be great to start, but you got to start to be great, right? Nobody Absolutely. remembers the person who never even went after it in the first place, right? No. So start your project, be consistent and forget about, dude, forget about what people are thinking. 
Forget about the likes. Forget about the instant success. That's the trick that the millennials need to overcome is that exactly. entrepreneurship doesn't happen like that. So stop expecting Nor, your business, your project to happen like that. And if I may, you know, entrepreneurship doesn't happen like that, nor, nor does happiness. Oh, it's not. Gosh. Take us there. <laughs> Take us there. Tell it's, us, it's, Jackie Moon, tell us, tell us about your definition and your, uh, your two cents on happiness. Uh, go read a Winnie the Pooh book. It's, it's that simple. I, I, I keep it simple, stupid. I'm a big uh, Kiss fan. It's life short. My, my grandfather said life is but a wink in the eye of time. Uh, we're, we're, and, and this is Batani. This is the guy I uh, went skydiving with. And I won't embarrass you on the skydiving story. But uh, when those doors open, you realize how small we are and, and uh, you know, how, how quick this all goes. So find something you like to do. Find some cool people to hang out with and make the world a little bit of a better place. And you're solid. That's happy. Oh, Dennis, you don't, you don't want the story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the story. No, you just, you know, I was the first one to go and I was all bells and whistles. And then uh, 30 seconds later, you still hadn't jumped out of the plane because you had a moment up there at 30,000 feet. <laughs> I literally saw my best friend fly out the plane. A perfectly and, good airplane. And this dude is like, he's, he's, I'm attached to him and he's screaming yeah. at me. He's because I guess you got this short window and he's like, and I'm having second thoughts and he's like, get your feet out the door. And I'm like, ah, ah. I literally for about a week after that experience, I questioned my entire existence. I questioned all of oh, reality. He was, he, was so, he was so different that day. He was so different. <laughs> Think, nothing was ever the same after that day. Um, but that's awesome, man. I, I, I really appreciate um, you taking the time, Jack. Uh, what we're going to do here now is we're going um, to we're going to end the recording. The people who are on the call are going to get a chance to actually engage with you one on one for maybe 15, 20 minutes and pick your brain a little bit of inside VIP content. Um, but if you're watching the recording, we really appreciate you spending this 30, 45 minutes with us. We hope you keep coming back for more with the Wavemakers community. Thank you again to Jack Burke. Thank you again to the people who are on this call. We are super humbled and blessed to be able to provide value to you guys. And we'll see you next time.